Ben is okay not being the fuel on offense because right. he's the fuel on defense. Exactly. Russ has to be the fuel on offense, which takes away from the, the broad and whatever. So I think mm-hmm. in AD. So I think Ben does fit better because he's okay with taking a back seat offensively exactly. and just being the 100% defensive guy. So guys, make sure you turn notification bells on, whether you're on Dylan's channel, my channel, make sure you subscribe. Keep rocking with us. Also, check out my links down below to shop the official small with the Spins Arch merch collection. Get you the wavy tea, the classic tea, all that you need. And uh, buy us that coffee because tis the season to give you. That's right. And tis the season of some drama. Some drama. Death, taxes, and NBA drama. That's Three right. things that certify in life. Right. So let's get right into it because people are gonna have a lot of questions, refuted, blown up on comments, blah, blah, blah. whether y'all like it or not. The Lakers. So it was reported that the Lakers. Two things were reported yesterday. Shams reported that the the Lakers were amongst a few teams that are interested in Ben Simmons, and then today it was reported that the Lakers have had internal talks about trading Russell. Westbrook. So one plus one equals two. What could they be? Who could they be entertaining a trader and Russ for? But a Ben Simmons. Now Russell Westbrook is expected to make. Well, not expected. He's going to make around forty-seven million dollars next year, um, contract-wise. And we know that the Lakers are tied up with LeBron, AD, and Russ's contracts. That they don't have room to make any other moves. But vet minimum, guys, and we see the vet minimum ain't maximizing the talent on the floor and it's not getting the championship. On the other end, the 76ers, they're both desperate teams is what I'm trying to outline. The Lakers are desperate for a change, whether it be Russ or whatever. Um, the Sixers are desperate for a change. The B being the only guy is not working. Ben is not coming back. It's dead value sitting in Ben. They need to get a playmaker out there. Thoughts? It could work. And, you know, you and I were talking about this. And at first it seemed like, nah, that, that won't really work out. Right. But then when you sit down, you actually think about it, you break down, you know, okay, you know, if Russ goes to Philly, how would it work out? If Ben Simmons goes to LA, how would it work out? How would everybody play with each other? How would it mesh? And it seems like, you know, it would work out. You know, just to give the outline to each thing, we'll break it down a little bit more. You know, Russ goes to Philly. Um, obviously, Joel Embiid, you want to see him in the post more, but he does have that ability where he can shoot. He can give you that spacing. And, you know, you get what you kind of want. Wanted in Ben Simmons, a facilitator, yet somebody who can score. And, you know, Russ isn't the greatest shooter, but he can and he will shoot. Whether he's going to shoot the lights out or remains to be seen. But still, you get a playmaker, which is what the Sixers need at the point guard position right now. Because no shade to Tyrese Maxey, he's just not there yet. You know, he he can and most likely will be a good, serviceable, serviceable NBA player. But he's not Russell Westbrook. Even at Russell Westbrook's older age, and you know, he's not his prime anymore. But still, Russell Westbrook is an upgrade at the starting point guard spot over Tyrese Maxey, at least right now. Um, Russell, it can be a good facilitator. I mean, he it has been averaging triple doubles for like the past three years now. So he, he'll be able to find him beat. I mean, look back to when it was Russ solo and OKC. And he had Steven Adams. I mean, Steven Adams was putting up numbers. He was making Steven Adams look real good. I mean, Steven Adams is a good NBA center. But just think about what Russell can do with an MB. What he can do kicking out to Tobias Harris. Kicking out to a Seth Curry. So... He has playmakers around him. He has he has good shooters. He has another, you know, or I guess in this case will be a Batman. He's got another superstar next to Embiid. Um, so there's the Russ case for Ben Simmons. Hold on, let me oh, make. Go ahead, go ahead. Let, I'll make my Russ case yeah, yeah. for Sixers, and then right. we'll both see what we think about Ben with the Lakers. Okay. But I agree with your sentiments. Like I've said several times before, some of the, in my opinion, three of the Sixers' biggest problems. Tyrese Maxey has been. A great point guard for the Sixers. But outside of Tyrese Maxey, we don't have another ball handler. 
That was the problem last season when Ben Simmons was our only real ball handler. We needed to get someone off the bench, and that's why we got George Hill. We're really missing a playmaker off the bench. Now, Russ will come and be in the starting lineup, which will make Tyrese Maxey our playmaker off the bench. But that automatically solves one of the Sixers' biggest problems, not having a true point guard off the bench. We have a lot of two guards, Furkan, Shake. Those are two guards that we're trying to put in a point guard box, which does not work. Russ is a true facilitator. Like Dylan said, one thing about the man, he's going to get a, a triple-double with the assist category, category check. Now, I saw someone on Twitter made a great point. This Sixers team will give Russ the best spacing that he's had since Houston, right. which will help Russ, be, Russ because his best game, like we were talking about earlier, is slashing and attacking the rim. Right. He already solves that one big problem. One big thing we're missing out Ben Simmons is that facilitator. Russ will, have, will instantly be a, a huge upgrade facilitator position. Tyrese Maxey can take that facilitation role off the bench. Two, another one of the Sixers' biggest problems is having a true playmaker, a true closer when the going gets tough in the fourth quarter. Right. Somebody outside in the B who's going to go get a bucket in a closeout game. Mm -hmm. Who but Russ? Y'all can't stop Russ from trying to close out a game. Right. Russ will check that box. He will be the guy who will help the Sixers close out great games. He can create his own shot and create for others. That's a big problem. Tobias Harris cannot... For the love of God, is just unwilling to be able to create his own shot off the dribble. Seth Curry is growing in that category, but that's not why we brought Seth Curry in. We brought Seth Curry in to be that pop and stop and pop shooter, to be that catch and shoot guy. And he's growing into being able to create his own shot off the dribble. But we need someone who can reliably create their own shot off the dribble, and that is Russ. So he checks two of the categories that the Sixers are needing right now. And like you were saying, imagine Russ. With all those shooters, whole lot of shooters, you don't want no problems. It's a whole lot of shooting. Exactly. Is. Russ be able to kick out the set. Cork Miles, just depending on the lineup. Tyrese Maxey. Now, Tobias Harris has been struggling right now because he's having to be that second, that number two option outside of the B. And Tobias Harris, despite what his salary says, he is not the number two option. He's too reluctant to shoot. He does not take his open shots. He takes these poor contested looks when he has open shots. Like I say, he cannot create for himself off the dribble consistently. Russ automatically is our number two guy. And be Russ, number one, number two scoring option between them. And Tobias Harris is our third option. So, really, I think this works for the Philadelphia 76ers, Dylan. Yeah. And the people want to say Russ and, and B had that beef. They ain't holding on to that. They're not, hold, they not worried about that beef. They're not worried. I'm sure once Russ looked at the replay, you know, and this was, well, this was, was two, two years, years ago. ago. First of all, it was two years ago. Second of all, if Russ actually looked at the replay, you know, Embiid was literally trying to stop, but he was already in the air because Embiid was going up for a block. Russ was going up for a layup. Russ lost the ball, and then Embiid kind of fell over him because his momentum carried him into Russ because he was trying to block the shot, and he was already in the air. And then, worried about that no and then the reporter asked, y'all cool? And he said, F no. First of all, that's right after the game. Exactly. It's two years ago. Dude's getting his scuffle tuffles on the court all the time. Neither one of them guys are worried about that. But Dylan, we made the case for why that worked for the Sixers. Right. <laughs> now, the Lakers is much more complex. Yes. Now, on paper, one of the, one of, one of the Lakers' biggest glaring needs is defense. The defense sucks. Insert Ben Simmons, defense automatically through the roof. Yep. Other than that, how do you think Ben could and could not fit with the Lakers? So, I'll start with how he could fit with the Lakers. He could fit with the Lakers because Ben isn't necessarily, I mean, as far as we've seen from Ben so far, it doesn't seem like Ben is necessarily pressed to get a shot off. And I mean, Ben likes to score, mm -hmm. but Ben is also okay with facilitating and he will do just that. And I think he would be great at that um, for to get guys shots like LeBron, to get guys better shots like AD, um, and to set you know their shooters up like Wayne Ellington, so on and so forth, Carmelo. So I think it's just somebody who doesn't necessarily have to get their shot off or is not looking to get you know crazy amounts of shots off. Because LeBron, you know, he don't want to get his shots off. AD, he don't want to get his shots off. Melo, want to get his shots off. Ben can help facilitate that. So I think that's one of the reasons it could work. Now, one of the reasons I think it may be a struggle for them to get that to work, 
Ben Simmons is not necessarily a shooter. And we all know LeBron thrives around guys who can shoot, especially the wing players. You know, look at Kyrie was a shooter, you know, when, you know, when he had, um, we when he had D-Way, he was a shooter. You know, LeBron likes to be around shooters. Ben Simmons obviously is not that. Uh, another reason, so that could be a problem. Another reason that, you know, this could not necessarily work for the Lakers is how are they going to handle, because Ben Simmons likes to work out of the post, obviously, because he's not that much of a shooter. He makes plays in the post. How is that going to work with AD down there? Now, AD can't stretch the floor, but AD is better in the post. You know, AD is bailing the defense out if he's shooting threes all day. So how is that going to work with, you know, it's going to be AD in the post plus another big, like, how is that going to work down low? Is that going to, are they going to clog up the lane too much? And is there going to be a spacing issue? That's something to look out for. However, if Ben is, you know, slashing to the basket, you know, trying to get to the bucket, that could also help with, you know, he can drive, kick out, or, you know, drive and finish. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there, but ultimately I think it could work, you know, if if the Lakers do want to, you know, seriously make a run, I think a change does need to be made. I think the experiment yeah. has gone on a lot enough, and just Russ is, he's just not a fit with the Lakers. It's not, obviously Russ hasn't been playing well, AD hasn't been playing well, but, you know, AD not playing well could be a mixture of, you know, Russ's play style. Russ is a crasher, he likes to go to the basket, and that just might not fit well with AD's game, you know, so... They just need to change something up. And with Ben Simmons coming on, you know, maybe that can help AD's game a little bit. Maybe that can help AD get some better shots. So something needs to change. If, like I said, the Lakers want to make a change, they're going to have to figure something out. And if they want to get Ben Simmons, they'll have to figure it out. Definitely. Like you were saying, so let me read off Russ's stats. So Russ has been on a hot streak right now with the Lakers, and AD has been continuously slumping, which brings in NBA Twitter saying AD is the problem. Now, the Lakers have multiple problems, like defense, um, and AD is one of their problems. I'm not going to say AD has been sucking. We can't right. lie. Right. So this is Russ's last 11 games, 20 points per game, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, 49% from the field, 37% from three, seven and four record. Good, good numbers. Great numbers. Great numbers. AD has been in a slump, and yeah. it could be like you were saying. Now, Russ is the type of player that is a one. He is a dominant one. Yeah. Point guard, not combo guard. He is a point guard, and he'll be able to play that role in Philly, the role that he is best suited for, the role he played in OKC, the role he played in Houston, the role he played um, – with Bradley Bill, yeah. he'll be able to play that role, the certified one, offense running through him. He'll be able to play that role in 76ers. Right. Playing alongside LeBron James, he's not always able to do that, and that's not his fault. That's the player Russ is. He's a true point guard, and you have a true point guard in LeBron. It doesn't always work with both of them because now you said um, AD's game could be hindered from Russ. Slash an attack in the basket. Yeah. Now, you might say, well, would that hinder and beat? No, because Ben Simmons is a slasher and attacker. And in the regular season, the 76ers were not a fluke. They were a number one seed, and Ben and B were playing extremely well together. But Ben was the only person slashing and attacking. Maybe in the Lakers, since they have two, yeah. LeBron and Russ both needing to get to the basket and AD, that's three people down low who thrive in the paint. Yeah. That's probably what's not working in right. the Lakers. All three of them can't get off exactly. on one night. LeBron and Russ can get off, mm -hmm. or Russ and AD mm -hmm. can get off at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Mm -hmm. So that could be the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, you might ask, well, won't that pose the same thing with Ben Simmons? Jeez, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, probably. That's why we said they're they going to have to figure they it out. They're going to have to figure it out. But Ben Simmons will provide the lockdown defense. Right. And the big question is, if they do trade for Ben Simmons, I don't know. We know they have the Rich Paul clutch ties. LeBron, a LeBron, uh, LeBron, Ben Simmons, are all up on the Rich Paul. They are 82. 82, pretty much everybody in the league now. Right. But we know Ben and LeBron are OG clutch yep. Rich Paul guys. Yep. LeBron, I mean, Ben said before that he wants to play on the West Coast. He said that about a month ago. And he said about a month ago he wanted to play for the Lakers. There you go. Ben is going to know. It's easier, in my opinion, for Ben to adjust his game yes. to the Lakers than it is for Russ to adjust his game to the Lakers. Yes. 
I agree because Russ been doing what he do since he came in the league. He's always been that, you know, attacking the basket, slasher, explosive type of point guard player, a scoring point guard. He's always been a scoring point guard. Ben Simmons, he's a little bit more versatile in this game, you know, besides the fact he can't run. That's the size point. He can go on the post. He can run, you know, he can run on the fast break. He can facilitate. Now, Russ is a good passer, too. Obviously, he's getting uh, 10 assists every night. But uh, there's just a little bit more, I feel like, versatile. There's a little bit more versatile aspect to Ben Simmons' game, which I think can help him play with LeBron. I think the with the basketball IQ, you know, Russ, uh, that LeBron has, him and Ben Simmons, the AD, they could probably all figure it out. Russ just, not that he's stuck in his ways, but he plays the way he plays. And at his age, you know, he, he, in the NBA, you can't necessarily teach an old dog new tricks. Yes. So I think that's part of the reason why it couldn't work. But Ben Simmons is still a younger player. And like I said, he's a little bit more versatile in his game. I think they should be able to figure it out. Especially, you know, if if they want to make it work, they can make it work. Not to say that Russ and LeBron and AD didn't want to make it work. It's just that they was working with a uh, like a, they were trying to put a circle in a square peg. Ben, you can kind of shave him up a little bit, maybe, to see what he needs to be when you couldn't necessarily do that with Russ. So I think that's the difference there. So we'll see if we can somebody, make it work. Somebody made a good point, and I think this put the nail in the coffin. First of all, Russ's game is his high motor, his high offensive motor. Right. Ben does not have a high offensive motor. Right. Now, someone made a good point. It would be like the 2020 Lakers with Ben Simmons. Lockdown defense, LeBron and AD running the point on offense. LeBron and AD fueling the offense. Lockdown defense, the Lakers being known for their defense. Ben will fit in that because Ben is okay not being the fuel on offense because right. he's the fuel on defense. Exactly. Russ has to be the fuel on offense, which takes away from Le LeBron and whatever. So I think, mm -hmm. and AD. So I think Ben does fit better because he's okay with taking a back seat offensively. Exactly. And just being the 100% defensive guy. So I think that is the key to it working. Ben is okay mm -hmm. not being the offensive motor. Russ thrives on being the offensive motor. There you go. So that's just our 50,000 cents, y'all. Let us know what y'all think. We're going to keep monitoring the streets, seeing what's popping, what's going down. We're going to see what's going to happen. Yeah. We'll see what but y'all, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, subscribe. Keep rocking with us, turn notification bells on, let us know what y'all think, y'all. It could really get crazy, because one thing about the Lakers, they will pull the trigger. One thing about the Lakers, and one thing about Daryl Morey, boy. They're going to pull the trigger. They're going to pull the trigger. They're going to make some changes, if some changes need to be made. Well, there's a long time coming with the Ben Simmons trade, but we'll see what happens, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, tell me to you guys next time.